So, uh, as I said, my name is Marco Tolani. I'm also here not only because I'm teaching in computer science, but also the admissions tutor for computer science. Uh, and uh, let me start by giving you some introduction. You possibly know about all our courses, but anyway, just to give you uh, a little introduction. So clearly, we offer the basic computer science uh, BNC, which is the traditional single honors one. We do also have the MCOMP, what we call the MCOMP or Integrated Masters, which is exactly like the, the first three years are exactly the same as the uh, Bachelor's, uh, the Single Owners Computer Science. And then there is an additional year, uh, which is some advanced courses. So basically this fourth year would correspond to a master's like uh, course. Uh, in this slide, what you can see basically is also the, the, the tradition that is a kill basically, and it's about combined owners. So that's uh, that's been traditional at kill for since the beginning basically. And right now what we offer is uh, combined owners courses in computer science and some other subjects. Now, just to clarify on this, and I'm trying to guess some of the questions that usually have, uh, you know, I get during those kind of presentations. But again, uh, feel free to ask me anything if you don't want to know anything particular. Uh, one of the questions is uh, what is a combined owners and basically it's really half and half. So half of the course for half of the modules from computer science and half of the modules from uh, another course that can be, as you can see, astrophysics or biology or all the other ones. And there is a, need, a little thing there that says bracket degrees, and that's something specific to us that I want to discuss uh, a little bit more in detail uh, later on. Uh, just to give you uh, some more context, this is an overview of the modules, and don't worry, I'm not going to go into all of them, but just to give you an idea of how the, the, the general course is organized, uh, you can see in this slide, this is an overview of all the modules. I will be referring specifically to the single honors course, so I'm not going to be talking a lot about the, um, the combined honors, but again, ask me if you want to know anything specific. specific. Uh, in this slide, where well, you can see the the blue modules, the ones that are that appear in uh, in blue right now, are the mandatory modules, basically the compulsory modules, and the red ones are the, are the optional ones. If you look into year one, you, what you can see is that uh, the some of the modules clearly are the introductory ones. So there is programming fundamentals, fundamentals of computing. So basically, you can see some introductions in introduction into the topic. And then moving on to year two, there is either the version two of those modules or some advanced modules. So for instance, advanced programming practices that basically is the third module of our programming um, programming set basically. And also it's interesting to, to see that in year three, what we have is basically everything is red, meaning that everything is an optional module, almost everything I should say, uh, besides the, the final year project. So what that means basically is that in year three, you will have uh, the, the, the choice to customize the program to, uh, to, your, um, to your interests basically. Uh, so as I said, in year one, we'll start by introduce introductory modules and that again, let me guess one of the questions that may be there. Uh, so one of the curiosities or questions that usually are there is, uh, do I need to be a programmer already to study computer science? Now the answer to this is no, you don't. So clearly I'm aware that right now at schools you already start maybe learning, possibly learning some coding, but it's not necessary. So we don't expect you to be a programmer already. So we will be giving you all that is necessary to, uh, to start studying with us basically. And that's exactly what happens in this programming one, programming fundamentals module. So this will give you, it will be in semester one, year one, and this will, be, will give you the basics. Uh, after that, uh, we are expecting to bring everybody up to speed to the same level. In year one as well, you also have some other introductory modules like introduction to algorithms. And one module that I want to point out is this uh, communication, confidence and competence. And that's basically a kind of, um, uh, a transitional module to give you some basic academic skills because I know it's a, it's a little different to, to study in the university rather than, than it is at school. So that's where we are going to teach you how to do a proper research, to read a scientific paper and to prepare you basically for the rest of the course. Anyway, uh, just something that I want to point out is something that we introduced, we started introducing uh, a couple of years ago. I, I think already we are in the second year that we are doing this and is these bracketed degrees that I mentioned in the in the first slide. 
Uh, one thing basically that we noticed and also interacting with our advisory board, we do have um, uh, an industry advisory board in our program and basically interacting with them, we identified some areas that are of specific interest and some of you may uh, identify with any of those areas. And so we selected those areas and we created what we call brackets. They are, they are kind of specializations, but not exactly. But anyway, just to mention them, uh, we created the first five ones and are the blue ones that you can see in this slide, like the games, cybersecurity, software engineering, AI, and web and app development. So those are the areas in computer science that we think are more in demand right now and that people maybe uh, want to focus a little bit more. And they were a kind of a good success, basically. People like those um, brackets, basically. So we are introducing this year a new one that is called Digital Forensics, and this will be the first time that the bracket is going to be run in collaboration with the Forensics School. And what they uh, amount to is basically a pre-selection of optional modules. I mentioned earlier that we do offer in, in every year basically some uh, optional modules. Uh, each of those brackets selects uh, a choice of optional modules uh, that characterize one particular area of computer science. So for instance, if you look into this slide, you can see, for instance, I don't know, cybersecurity. In cybersecurity, there are three modules, cybercrime, digital forensics, and cybersecurity itself, which is a year three module, and they become mandatory in that particular choice. So if you want to choose to study with us computer science with a bracket, so for instance, computer science bracket cybersecurity in this case, you will get this choice of modules that basically will characterize your preparation in this case. And I think this was a, I, I think personally, I like this introduction of bracketed degrees, and I think it's a good one also because an advantage of doing this is that you are, you're going to characterize the award that you will get at the end. So you will be uh, graduating in cyber, in computer science, cybersecurity, and this is already kind of a presentation of what uh, to, to your, you know, potential employer uh, later on. And the same thing applies to all the other brackets. So you can see that artificial intelligence, for instance, has a focus on different modules as well, so, as well as software engineering and all the other brackets. The red one, as I say, digital forensics is the one that we are introducing uh, this year. Now, I think usually what I do uh, in this kind of presentation, and I think I'm hoping that uh, it may be helpful for you, is uh, uh, I want to start at the end. So starting at the end for me means what will you be doing or what can you do uh, potentially with our after you study with us so i asked my colleagues some colleagues of mine to give me material about what they uh, about the, the modules that they teach or about the projects that they supervised for the final year project and this is some material that i collected from them so for instance in this case uh, this material was provided by one of my colleagues Sandra Wally. She's teaching a module. This is actually a module in year one, and it's about computer animation, computer animation and multimedia. So she uh, introduces the primitives for creating those kind of cute animations. The, this is one, for instance, the one inspired by nature or some inspired by art in this case. So there are uh, this is inspired by some paintings. And uh, it's already something, so you start immediately uh, by producing something, something that is even artistic in this case. I think I find it very, very um, nice if I can say that. It's not all about that, clearly. Uh, computer science is a kind, is a difficult subject to describe because it's very, very broad. So I'm sure that a lot of you will have uh, different interests. Myself, my interest is specifically in machine learning and AI, but a lot of you may have different interests. So for instance, in this case, I'm presenting a project on another topic, and this guy, this project in particular was supervised by my colleague uh, Nadia Kamval. She's one of the lecturer in computer science, and her uh, area of expertise is in computer vision and uh, cybersecurity. And in this case, this is part of a research and was used for a project, for a student project, and uh, it's about um, steganography. Steganography, it's a very complicated word, but the concept is basically hiding information in plain sight. And in this case, the idea was that uh, you can process uh, one um, uh, video stream, so each of the frames in a video stream, but you can hide some information. You can see here the, the you know, the red circle. Uh, there is some information hidden. I, in this case, it's made more visible just to show you what it is. But in general, it's information that is not visible to the to the naked eye. 
but it's in there. And the purpose of this was uh, to provide uh, some kind of watermarking for the for the video stream. So basically to to make sure that the video has not been tampered with. And this is one of the projects basically that you can do. So at the end, after you study with us, you will be given all the necessary uh, competences. And that's, for instance, could be one of the applications that you could uh, you could implement if you like. And jumping to another um, another subject. In this case, this is part of my own research. And uh, my own research is about, as I said, I'm working in machine learning and AI. Nowadays, of course, you hear a lot about, about AI. There is a lot of talk about chat GPT and all these kind of things. And I'm not sure if any of you has already, probably you may have heard the term uh, deep learning. Now, deep learning is a kind of advanced machine learning technique that is basically uh, a thing that is uh, a lot of the research that you hear about in these days is based on deep learning. The issue with deep learning is that it becomes uh, obscure, obscure because it's complicated to be understood. And I don't mean because it's just difficult, but the problem is that even some experts uh, cannot really understand why some algorithm is providing some output. Now, in this case, you can see this is one of my sample projects that I, I was using in one of the uh, of the modules that I was teaching. And basically the idea is that you can look at the images. In this case, you see at the bottom here, I was showing an image of a little bird. It's a toucan and uh, uh, basically you can process a lot of those images, images of animals, birds or cats and dogs and so on and so on. And you can create algorithms that automatically identify, uh, in this case, the, the which animal it is. And this is called uh, classification. So you classify uh, images, and it's very useful for for many in many many fields. Now the issue here, uh, those kind of algorithms have existed for a while right now, so that's already kind of state of the art research. But now uh, the the interest has, has shifted shifted sorry uh, to to another aspect and is the aspect is okay now you're able to identify that this particular image represents a bird but why why are you giving me the answer so in my case my curiosity was why are you able to classify these images as a bird so are you looking at the beak are you looking at the orange part are you looking at the shape or anything and basically that's what is called interpretable machine learning or explanatory AI. And that's uh, one particular area of research. And this here you can see here I was showing you uh, it's um, well, it's a little bit of a Python code. You may be familiar with Python already and it doesn't take long to program this and it's already it may be even fun basically. So the algorithm tells you exactly why does it classify the image in that way. The, the, so the information that the algorithm is using. So why is that interesting? Well, I wanted to show you something cute now, right now. So I was talking about uh, I use the image of a bird, but if you think about something else and if you think about images that are not so cute anymore, unfortunately, they could be an MRI, MRI scan of your body basically. And if you want to identify if some part of this scan represents maybe something dangerous for your health, it could be a cancer cell, for instance. There are algorithms that do classification of images also in that case, so it's classification of medical images. In that case, it becomes a little more important to understand why the algorithm is giving you some uh, some answers. So if the algorithm, instead of saying this is a bird, this, that image is a cat, that other image is a dog, instead of that, the algorithm is asked to identify cancers versus non cancer cell, then you can understand that it may become a little bit more relevant to understand why and you want to make sure not only that the answer is what it is, but also the reason why so that the, the doctor can trust the algorithm. And that's another area of research. And the reason why I'm presenting you uh, that to you right now is that uh, it, it seems to be, you know, very, very complicated research, but actually we do have the tools and you will have the tools basically to perform the, this kind of analysis. This is actually part of a final year project that was signed uh, last year, I believe. And again, just jumping to a different topic, yet another project. But in this case, this project was supervised by Goxel, another colleague of mine is teaching communications and networks, uh, one of our modules. And in this case, the project is about uh, uh, a web application. This is one of the projects. This was actually a project that was completed a couple of years ago. Uh, Adam actually is, uh, was uh, one of our students, he's an al alumnus right now. 
Uh, and this project was sponsored by our own um, sports center. Uh, so I know that right now we are remote, but hopefully sooner or later you will be able to, uh, to visit our campus and you will see we have a very nice campus and also a very nice sports center. And they wanted to move away from the typical, you know, um, paper map. Uh, Kiel is a very, very wide and huge campus. And basically we saw so, uh, there is a lot of green grass and a lot of facilities where you can uh, do exercises and they had a paper map. This project was about transforming this paper map into the digital version uh, to stimulate well-being in uh, students and stuff, I guess. And that was a third year project. And the final one that I want to present is still another thing about, uh, so it's about image processing, but in this case, the focus is yet uh, different. And uh, ideally, this is an application for your mob mobile phone. You just point your mobile phone towards a concrete structure and here you cannot see in the output here, but basically this will be run on your phone and there is a machine learning algorithm that tries by processing the image, it tries to identify uh, the state of the structure. And this is very helpful because it, it, it provides Carlo kind of uh, early detection of potential defects before the structure can go into, can be corrupted basically and can even uh, fall down. So this is part of the research that Papadicha is uh, uh, carrying on. Uh, Papadicha, by the way, is one of the teachers and uh, he is, is actually the teacher that uh, uh, teaches the module in year one, the programming one module. So if you join us in September, he's the person that you will meet at the, the very beginning. So this was just a, a very quick overview of what we do. And right now I'm usually, well, I usually we do give this presentation in person, but, uh, and I'm kind of, you know, the face for computer science because, you know, as I said, admissions tutor, but clearly there is a lot more of us. And I think it's nice to give you an idea of who, who we are. And this slide is actually, I, I try to collect uh, some of the faces. It's not all of us, but some of the people that I already mentioned. So Gopsel, for instance, is also coordinating the, the PGR research and he was the, the sponsor of that project that I mentioned just a moment ago about the well-being map. Uh, Papadicha is uh, uh, the, sorry, Papadicha is not in this uh, picture, but oh yeah, Papadicha is right here and he is also is the programming one instructor, the last project that I mentioned, and we do have other people clearly. We have Sandra Wally is our head of research, Daniel is our head of school right now, but is active in research in theoretical computer science, and Charles is also uh, kind of um, a very important person because he's the project coordinator. So he's the person that actually coordinates all those projects. And we are growing right now. So uh, we have hired uh, new staff recently in particular because we are growing in cybersecurity. You can see Aisha here is, uh, uh, she's working. She's active in cybersecurity research as well as Uchenna. Both of them, they are developing the new modules in cybersecurity. Beda is working, uh, we, I, I actually work with her in AI and data science. She's an expert in computer vision. Uh, Amro is an expert in software engineering, is teaching the software engineering modules and so on and so on. So many, many people and each of us is uh, uh, an expert in some particular area of computer science. This is clearly research. So why am I talking so much about research? Well, clearly because research informs our, our teaching basically. So uh, myself, I'm teaching the module that is called Advanced Programming Practices, but I'm also doing research in machine learning. Clearly, uh, I don't use the, you know, my research in machine learning directly in my teaching, but I know that there are some good practices that are typically used when you want to carry on quality research. And those practices are the ones that I, that I use uh, and I try to embed in my teaching and try to communicate hopefully. Uh, so basically that's a little introduction about us. And now just to finish a little bit quickly uh, about the presentation, the general presentation of the course, I, I at this point I like to brag a little. So if you bear with me, uh, computer science, as I said, we are active in research and that's uh, fortunately that's been also recognized. So right now Kiel is, uh, uh, is uh, as you can see, is 32 in the global ranking in the institution for the global ranking. This one that I'm showing is the, uh, the Guardian uh, ranking, but in particular, uh, computer science is also um, uh, is also moving up in the in the ranking, and now we are 20 together with other good institutions, and that's clear. I think uh, it's a recognition of the quality of our research and our teaching as well. And uh, you can check. I mean, it's the, the link is there. It's the Guardian table for for universities this year. 
Now, how does that reflect on you? Well, as I said throughout the teaching, also to all the opportunities that you can get. One thing that I would like to mention at this point, I talked a lot about the final project, but there is also other things. Uh, as I said, I was focusing a little bit in this part of the talk about the, um, uh, the, the single owners uh, degree, and that's three years. In the single owners, there are a few options. So for instance, between year two and three, you can choose what we call a sandwich year. The sandwich year basically is an additional year, as I say, between year two and three, um, that you can use to go into an industry placement. Uh, this is an option that I, would, I wouldn't say that the majority of people choose, but I think the people that do choose these are kind of happy about that. Uh, it's not a paid, necessarily a paid placement. It's something that you will need to look uh, for and you will need to figure out to you, possibly you will need to um, to find a good company where you want to work with, with our support. But if you do that, I think it's a very good opportunity to, to get a first hand experience in, in a work environment. Basically, it's something that you will carry back. So basically, it's uh, it's between year two and three. So then you will be back with us in year three. You will finish with us. And then, of course, as I mentioned, there is the final project. And sometimes what happens is also that you can come back already with a job offer from the company. So it's a very good opportunity. Another similar opportunity, because it happens also between year two and three, is the year abroad. Year abroad is basically going abroad and studying at another institution. Uh, it doesn't need to be uh, strictly related to your program, so it doesn't need to fit exactly with what you teach, with what you learn in our program. It's mostly about improving your general uh, knowledge. It is also a very, very good opportunity to uh, basically to broaden your horizon, I would say. The final project I taught at length, I, I think it's also the, the first time that you actually use uh, whatever you learned with us, and I think it's a, it's a very interesting opportunity. There are many, many more choices. I don't want to be too long right now. Also, I will pause a little bit right now, so if there is any questions, please uh, let me know if you want to know anything specific. But other opportunities, clearly, you know, it's, there is, we have foundation here, and, uh, you know, there are also short term opportunities in terms of uh, uh, internships here at Kiel as well. So different, different things. Uh, after you graduate with us, clearly you can go work and, you know, most of our graduates work in a very, very, um, in an, uh, a, you know, in a field that is strictly related with what, they're what they have studied. And those are some, um, some pathways, basically. I collected them from the LinkedIn group that we have from, for our uh, alumni students. You can see that it, it, it varies broadly, uh, not necessarily local, but nationwide companies. So, See you in September, but right now, actually, I want to pause a little bit. I just want to show you this slide because it's uh, it contains my own um, my email. Uh, as I said, I'm uh, uh, the admissions tutor, so I'm really happy to get any queries, specific queries on any you know uh, curiosity that you may have or any specific question. Uh, this has been intentionally a short presentation because I wanted to give you a very general overview of our courses and it's not complete by any means. In particular, I was not focusing on the uh, combined owners. So if you do have any uh, questions or those, and let me stop sharing for a little bit. If you want to note down my email, feel free to send me a line if you have any questions, but also if you do have any questions right now, uh, I'm happy to, to answer. So my plan would be, uh, let me stop sharing for a little bit, um, to give you a chance to, to ask questions right now. And also, and later on, I, I still have a couple of slides that are mostly on um, uh, a taste of how our teaching could be. Uh, I can see that there are a couple of questions, so I will stop right now with the slides for a moment. I will pause and I will answer questions, and then maybe I can start again with, uh, I can give you a taste of, uh, of our teaching. Clearly, it's something that is related to my own research a little bit. And then, of course, we can have time for questions also uh, at the end. Um, I can see, I can go ahead because I can see there are a few questions already. In particular, can we do two optional modules, uh, software engineering project management, as well as AI in year three, along with the third year project? So thanks, Bashar, for, Bashar, sorry, for the question. And uh, yes, uh, so uh, the choice of optionals depends a little bit on, um, it, it needs to be discussed because some modules have prerequisites. But in general, clearly here three uh, you will have. So you have a certain number of modules for each year. 
roughly it's four modules per semester. The, the final project counts as two modules, it's a double module, let's say. Besides that, you can choose, you will need to choose actually a few other optional modules. So in particular, software engineering project management is a module that you can choose as an optional module in year three. It does have, I, I do remember off the top of my mind here, it does have a prerequisite and the prerequisite is the software engineering module in year two. So the answer would be you can choose that optional provided that you studied software engineering in year two. Uh, in case you're interested, uh, that would be a pre-choice done for you if you go towards the, I was mentioning earlier, the bracketed degree. So if you choose the software engineering bracket, that will be basically done for you. But even if you don't, you can choose the option provided that you have the prerequisite. So hopefully that answers your questions. Um, due to the sandwich year, your degree, and again, thanks Pascal for this question, because actually I should have mentioned that. Yes, clearly the sandwich year will add a year to your entire degree, so it will become four years basically. Uh, it's an entire choice, and if I can take a moment just to clarify a little bit better on this question, um, is um, um, so um, it, it's a choice that you can make in the very beginning, so you can choose to go to the sandwich year, but also it's, just, it's a choice that you can defer a little bit. So you don't need to do to make that choice right now. So if you want to make use of the sandwich year, uh, it's possible to switch to the program uh, by basically by, um, let's say, by the beginning of year two, I would say that's uh, uh, that's the, um, yeah, that's the time where you would make this choice. For all of those things, uh, you can clearly refer to us. So there will be a person uh, in our program, typically the program director, or also you will have an academic mentor and you can get in touch with them and uh, and they will, have, will be able to advise uh, for all of those things. So not all the choice need to be made immediately, but clearly yes. So anyway, yes, the short answer is in the sandwich year, uh, yes, uh, that will bring the entire program to four years. And um, I don't know, should I go, um, I keep answering questions. I think that's uh, possibly the um, yeah. Let's uh, let's go with questions for now. I think um, so. I can see other questions. So let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Sorry, I'm going. I'm trying to go in order. Um, how much support is given by the university when searching for work placement in sandwich year? So that's an interesting question. So we do uh, support you. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot provide entire support, so we cannot provide you with, uh, you know, uh, directly. Uh, so basically, the short answer is it's up to you to come up with a placement and especially to to get in touch with the company. Clearly, there is some support. We do have a career office and we do have a tutor here that will guide your choice, but you will be asked to to find uh, your own placement. Ideally, the placement is not necessarily a paid one, although it usually it happens that it, well, I would say very often it happens that it's a paid one, uh, but uh, we can offer you basically, uh, yeah, we can just support you in the choice, basically. That's the, the short answer. Uh, as regards, there is another question that I can see here that regards a combined donors in general. Um, the combined owners, it's uh, the, the reason why I was not going into details about all of them, because the combined owners is literally 50-50. So you will get half of the modules for computer science and half of the modules for the other programs. So you can see the listing, the complete listing is in the, in the website, but my first slide uh, was giving you the, the list of choices. We do have computer science with newer science, uh, so that's um, a combined owners that we do offer. Uh, there are, you may need to check both pages, both courses for the um, for the um, uh, for the entry requirements. Clearly, you need to make to match the entry requirements. I cannot speak much about the entry requirements or the content for the other course. What I can tell you is that uh, you will uh, uh, for computer science, you will still get the preparation that is necessary for computer science. So what happens with combined donors is that you will be a computer scientist, so you will be able to go on to, to study computer science more, to go into a master or to work as a computer scientist. Uh, what that does happen in, by choosing a combined donors is that your choice of options will be 
much more limited clearly. So that's uh, clearly because, and that's the problem with timetabling and with fitting all the modules or, or modules all together. Uh, so the optionals, the optional modules will be quite limited because basically we'll have uh, comp compulsory modules that will come from both parts of the program basically. So, so that's uh, um, that's one thing. Um, uh, for other questions that may be about specific situations, so if you do have any uh, specific curiosity about one specific program, please contact me or get in touch. And again, I can see there are some questions that are about um, joining later, entering year two and everything. Uh, the official answer would be talk to the admissions tutor for this case, and in this case, the admissions tutor is myself. So please get in touch with me. But in this case, we need to look into the specific, um, you know, your specific background. So for all those questions, it, it needs to be a one to one conversation that we need to cover um, a little bit more. Um, just uh, well, let me see. I'm I'm happier to go with the questions. I think as long as you have them, I think it's more important for you to to clarify those things. And there is another question that uh, is about the individual study module. Uh, that's a module that we had in year two, and that's exactly what the name says, basically. So uh, it can be. Um, it's pretty much free. So it's a kind. Usually, it's a kind of a mini project, and it's basically it's an optional module that is entirely optional, even in the content. What we have there is a clearly there is a module coordinator for that module, and in this case, I think this year was actually the module coordinator was Paul Bell, which is also who is also our program director. So it will need to be a discussion. So there will need need to be an agreement with the supervisor of the module as long as the topic is relevant to the course and you know substantial enough to make it a module you're free to choose that's why it's called individual study so it's also yeah it's uh, basically it's meant to be something that just to expand so something that we not do not necessarily cover and so if you want to to study something very specific you can uh, use that module um so yeah so that's uh, um uh, okay, um, sorry, there is um, still going on with the questions because I think it's uh, much more interesting and I'm reading one. Do we have campus interviews for the placement in the final year? I'm not totally sure if I get this uh, question. So there is no placement in the final year. Uh, there is a there is a industry placement which is the sandwich year between year two and three. So it's not the final year. So basically after the industry placement, if you choose to do so, you will need to come back and then so basically it's year one, year two placement and then year three at the very end. Uh, so you will need to come back to to study with us and then uh, finally graduate. Uh, for the specific questions, if you have campus interviews, uh, what happens is that we do have a placement tutor. So when once you find a placement or you at least have a company that you're in touch with, you get in touch with us and the company needs to have an agreement with Kiel and there will be a discussion about the setting up topic basically. So the only thing that's required is that what you will do at the in the placement is something that is relevant for your studies and uh, we will make sure basically that's that that's the case. After that, what happens is that you go and you know take your placement. Uh, it's basically like working with the company. At the very end, you will be asked to provide a little report. Uh, so the supervision will be actually, uh, you know, um, the company will take care of the actual day to day supervision and there will be a kind of lightweight uh, remote supervision from us. At the very end, you will just produce a short uh, report. So that's the organization usually for the for that particular uh, module. Um, again, uh, just reading questions as they come and please keep them coming. I don't mind just, you know, uh, answering questions instead of uh, showing you more slides. I think it's more interesting. Another question is about optional modules and choice of optionals and changing your mind. That's a very interesting one. And it's uh, usually I know that you are start looking into options and everything. Uh, so if you choose software engineering and I'm Think um, if I understand correctly, uh, you're thinking about the bracketed degree in this case. So if you choose that bracket that is called software engineering, can I change my mind later on? In general, so um, in general, changing your mind is allowed. Clearly, the earlier the better. There are some cases in which uh, changing your mind may not work basically and especially for instance if you are we are studying i don't know computer science with neuroscience and then you want to switch back to just computer science that may not be possible if it's too late 
in terms of the bracketed degrees, because the bracketed degree is basically it's just a choice of optionals and is still computer science, it is quite easy to switch back and forth from one to the other, not back and forth, but actually to switch from one to the other. And the idea is basically because it's a choice of optional modules. Uh, again, the only issue may be in terms of prerequisites, uh, and that's something, uh, as I was mentioning before, you will have an academic mentor. Uh, so I'm assuming that, well, depending on the particular choice of so which bracket you were choosing earlier and then which is the one that you want to switch to, we'll need to analyze what the prerequisites are, but I would say that that is pretty easy. Clearly, it becomes a little more difficult if you do it, so you should do it as early as possible, I would say within year, within the first two years, because otherwise then in year three, with all the other options and prerequisites that are there, it may become a little bit more difficult. Um, another thing that I just want to point out, just in case anybody's interested, uh, if you, so something that is a little more difficult is to switch from computer science to a combined owners or the other way around. This may be a little bit more difficult because some modules uh, you may have missed some modules. So if you don't do it early enough, uh, it may be a little difficult. It is usually very, very easy within the first couple of weeks. You're free to choose. Usually that's uh, allowed and will and uh, well, allows you to do that pretty easily. Uh, in combined owners, uh, if you are choosing one combined owners could be computer science with mathematics and mathematics or computer science and biology. If you choose the combined donors and then you think that you prefer one more than the other, there is also the choice in year three to do something that is called majoring. So majoring means that in year three, you can have the choice to uh, to select more modules from one of the two options, basically from one of the two uh, combined donors, basically. So you can have, uh, you know, computer science and mathematics majoring in mathematics, for instance, if that's what you what you prefer. Uh, in terms of companies that come to campus for uh, higher and drive, yeah, we do have a career office clearly, so there are, so we do have, we are in touch with companies. There's something that is centrally managed from Kiel uh, in terms of offers and everything. Uh, so yes, clearly the, we can, I can point you to that, to, you know, to the career office and they can, uh, give you some some selection of this. Uh, however, it's uh, we do not have specific uh, provision for that at the school, if that's uh, if that's the question. Um, yes, and uh, OK, I can see there are some replies coming. If there is anything else specific, I'm again happy to reply. Let me try while we are um, replying to this. Let me share just very quickly again the um, my contacts uh, and I would really OK. So again, this is my email uh, and uh, make a note of it and uh, just send me a line if you if you uh, yeah, if you want to know anything or again, if you have specific questions for one particular choice or one, you know, your specific case, I think it's best to discuss one to one and I'm happy to uh, again to discuss. So just make a note of my email and I'm happy to answer those questions. I can copy it even here. Um, okay, let me pause a little bit. So if anybody else has, has any specific question, I can, I'm happy to reply or otherwise I can give you a very quick version of uh, some taste of a lecture, but I'm happy. I think, we, well, I think we're running a little bit late in time here. So I think possibly right now it's, uh, it's best to keep on going with questions rather than have a rushed presentation or anything else. Any other specific curiosity on anything that you would like? Just giving time to, if you can think about anything else, or otherwise I can ask, oh well, I can tell you other general information. So, one other thing is, well, first thing is, uh, as I said, I didn't go into detail about the, some choices. There are a lot of options that we offer. So I did mention the optional modules. There, are, there is also the choice for elective modules. Elective modules basically are the same as optionals, but they are offered from a different school. So it could be languages, it could be some focus on, uh, on law, some focus on business, and that's another options that you can have. 
and you can add to your curriculum. Not all the options are entirely possible, so not all combinations are entirely possible. And I understand there is a, it's a little bit overwhelming all this information. Don't worry, because what will happen is that you will be guided basically. Uh, so each of you will be assigned an academic mentor and the academic mentor. So each one is a teacher, basically is a lecturer. And those are the people that uh, you can go to for, for asking all those kind of questions. So usually at the beginning of each semester, you're asked to select your options and that's the time for a good discussion with uh, uh, with the academic mentor. The academic mentor is also there to to help you with any other academic issues that you may have in terms of uh, you know student life or anything that may affect uh, your your studies basically. Uh, yeah, so that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is that I didn't mention here, but of course clearly we do have societies as well. There is one society that is called Hakil. Hakil is managed by our students. It's, uh, they organize uh, hackathons, they organize tours to, uh, for instance, to Bletchley Park. That's what they usually do and a lot of other activities. And we do uh, also have another society that is the BCS uh, student chapter. Uh, I don't know if you know about BCS, but the BCS is the British Computing Society and basically is the, the society that uh, gives the accreditation to the courses. Now, right now we are all of our courses are accredited by the BCS. So basically what it means is that uh, the BCS analyzes the curriculum and um, makes sure that we uphold some quality standards. So they do not drive the choice of the modules that we offer, but they make sure that we do offer modules that you know, uh, uphold to a certain quality. Right now, we are. It's uh, it's something that clearly needs to be redone uh, after a couple of years, and that's exactly the process that we are going through uh, um, right now. Actually, so we are being reaccredited, but reaccredited by the BCS, and that affects uh, single owners and all the brackets. So all of them currently are accredited, and well, we expect to be reaccredited later on. Um, well, with them as well. And again, as I say, the BCS is the British Computer. So we do have the society that is, that is the BCS student chapter, and they also organize activities clearly, typically in our labs here. Now, usually what we will do, we would do uh, at this point, what I usually do is I give this kind of presentation that describes the course and everything. And then I would say, well, let's move on to one of our labs and it's the, it's called the CSL. Uh, so I don't know if you ever had the option to, to visit Kiel, but the CSL basically is the, the lab and it's one of the newest lab that we have here. It's a, well, actually it's an entire building and the third floor is an entire floor full of computers and that's where we have our practical labs. Usually it's uh, uh, about more than 150, I think it's 180 computers. Uh, and that also kind of brings me to answer one of the questions that you didn't ask yet, but usually I get is what do I need to study here? Uh, we do provide uh, with the computers and all of the software that you need to study with us will be installed on those computers. So ideally you can study there and those computers all are also uh, accessible from remote. So you don't need in theory your own computer. Clearly it makes your life much easier if you do have your own laptop. And if you want to, again, if you want to know about specifics about the laptop that's uh, best to use or advice to use, just feel free to, to get in touch with me. One last thing also, also that's something uh, I sometimes I get asked is uh, uh, what computer language do we use? Uh, the answer to that is we use Java. So Java is the, the computer language of choice, uh, in particular in uh, the programming modules. So we do have programming one, programming two, and the third module is advanced programming practice that I happen to teach. And we do use Java for those modules. However, so we need to select one language and in particular we wanted to have an object oriented language. However, it's not a Java programming course that we offer. So we do teach general concepts about programming. In particular, in my module, I teach something that belongs to any uh, object oriented language. Uh, we teach the, the, the good practices, practices that you may want to use when you are interacting with, uh, well, when you're working with a company where we're, when you are managing large uh, softwares. Java is not the only language, clearly. So there will be modules where you will use some specific languages, and I'm thinking about databases, languages, SQL, and so on and so on, web languages, PHP, JavaScript, and so on. 
and clearly in the modules like computational and artificial intelligence one and two, you will be uh, we will be touching a little bit on Python clearly because that's typically the most um, you know the most used language. So it's not entirely focused on Java. However, we did have a choice. We thought it would be good to maintain the same language at least for the core programming modules, and that's uh, that's Java. That's one thing. As I mentioned anyway in the beginning, we do not expect you to be a good programmer already. So don't worry about that because you will be given all the instructions and all the you know the the foundational concepts that you will need in our course. Um, yes, and thanks Dinesh for applying. I see that you were mentioning career fairs and so on and so on. That's uh, that belongs to the uh, to the the question about um, placements. Um, yeah, again, uh, I, I prefer to have this kind of dy dynamic presentation, so I didn't want to go into, I had another presentation that was focusing on a particular application that I'm using for research, neural networks and all these kind of things. Uh, I'm very happy to give it to you. Uh, and usually we do have it. We give this kind of presentation in uh, in our open days or application uh, applicant visit days. However, I'm happy to receive your emails. If you want to have a visit with us, even in you know in another day, just send me an email and we can organize that. It's usually we get people visiting and we can organize a very very quick tour of the campus. I think it's always a good idea uh, to see us in person anyway. And yeah, on a day like this, especially kids, very very beautiful anyway. So we are kind of proud of our campus. Um, any other questions that you or curiosities that you may have right now? I don't see any, but I'll, I'll give you some time. I don't think right now it's enough time to give the, the other presentations. I prefer to leave the, the time for, for questions anyway. Uh, don't worry if you don't have them. I mean, if they come to your mind later on, as I say, just contact me. That's, uh, that's uh, you know, I'm very happy to, uh, well, of course, contact me or just go to the, uh, you know, to our website and contact admissions if you have any other specific queries uh, about that. Um, but yeah, if you have any uh, interest, a specific interest about specific modules, I'm not able clearly. I don't know everything about all the modules, but if you do have any, if you do have any curiosity, I'm happy to put you in touch with the module leader for uh, for a specific module, or I can ask myself and I can relay the answer. Uh, so if you want to know more about the content or about the, you know some specific questions about what we use in specific modules, so feel just feel free to ask. Um, other than that is, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, of, of all the things that I mentioned, I was not able clearly to fit in all the research topics that we cover. This could be relevant for you in the, especially for the final project. But again, the final project is really your choice. So it's uh, the final project we do usually offer a selection of topics and typically the, those are the topics that we research on. But it's really uh, we are very happy to accept proposals. So at that point, really, you, if you have any specific interest, and actually, usually, I encourage people to uh, to come up with their own topic because that's something. It's a line that you can add to your curriculum and then shows uh, what your interests are. Anyway, it can be anything that you're interested in, provided that it's clearly it's uh, related to uh, to computer science. And uh, yeah, you will be given a supervisor, and the role of the supervisor is just to guide you through through the project, but not to you know, force you on a on a specific topic. Um, other than that, I think that's uh, what I wanted to to cover. I didn't cover any specific other things, but clearly we do have. You know, we interact. We do have. A, uh, we call it CISO right now, but basically it's the student services. There is a person dedicated to our school, and we do have student services clearly for supporting you in terms of uh, in case there are you know any mental issues or financial issues you can come. Usually the interaction is directly with the academic mentor first and the academic mentor will direct you to the um, uh, to the um, you know to the the proper person if necessary. The academic mentor is really usually a continuous interaction throughout the year actually throughout the three years. So the academic mentor stays with you for the duration of the course. 
uh, I can see there is other there are other questions maybe about the fees. There is no particular difference for computer science, but for the fees, I would really refer you to the to the website. All the information is in there, but I can tell you there is no nothing specifically um, different for computer science than um, than for other courses. Um, yeah. I tend to speak a lot, and in this case, I think it's uh, it's kind of uh, difficult because it's a uh, it's a kind of different settings. So it's does something that we got used to it because basically, well, one thing, one last thing that I could mention is um, we are used to this setting, and actually, uh, a lot of the material that we have in our modules is actually accessible online. We do have clearly. Uh, a web based learning environment. And as you can imagine, uh, a lot of things, well, my module in particular, I do focus on uh, how to access, how to work remotely, and everything. However, I should mention uh, we it's an in person course, so attendance is expected. But that means also that anyway, you can, you, you can. Uh, access all the material, the recording of the lectures, the slides will be accessible remotely. So if you want to, to catch up or sometimes you miss out one lecture uh, for any valid reason that uh, clearly it's uh, it's easy to catch up with that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's uh, Teams. Microsoft Teams is something that uh, clearly we are still using, especially for like a, as a notice board or as interaction uh, with the student. Clearly we did use it a lot more during pandemic, but that's uh, uh, right now we are back fully in person and that's uh, the typical setting. Let me just use the last couple of minutes just to mention um, in terms of modules, clearly we have lectures and something like, you know, uh, it's uh, well, the, the lecture as you can expect. And also usually we have practical labs, practical labs that happen in computer labs like the one that I was mentioning earlier. And usually you can have a couple of, uh, every week for every module. Usually you have a couple of hour lecture time and a couple of hours for practical time. And practicals are typically uh, exercises at the, at the computer. And usually you have not only the instructor, but also some, we call them demonstrators, typically PhD students that are there to help you with a lot of the typical issues that you have when your programs or configurations and all this kind of stuff, working with, uh, you know, configuring your own work environment, the IDE and uh, the choice of software and so on and so on. Um, yeah, so that's part of all the support that we uh, we offer. And yes, I, I can see that you're getting more proper answer about fees and everything. I can answer anything that is academic related. Please feel free to ask me uh, anything else. You can have a look at the website and also the website. There are contacts for the specific people to contact for any kind of other uh, questions like that. Again, if you want to go through me, I'm happy also to refer you to the uh, correct person anyway. It can be student services or uh, finance services and so on and so on. I, I I know that uh, we are running a little bit kind of out of time. So first of all, before it's too late, I just wanted to thank you for attending this. So thank you for being here. Hoping you to see you in September. And uh, again, yeah, get in touch for anything else. Um, let's see if we have some last minute questions. That's uh, yeah, I can see a good question. Actually, how many hours do the lectures run in a week? Well, that's a good one. It depends a little bit, but I was just quickly mentioning earlier, so you can expect roughly for the general uh, organization is uh, four modules in one semester, roughly. Each of the module uh, in a week will have two hours lectures plus two hours practical. Uh, so and that's for four modules. That's not, you know, it, don't take it as a, you know, set in stone because it may vary a little bit with modules, but that's roughly what you would get. And if you make the calculation, this is not a very heavy week. And I want to point out the reason for this is that there is a part of it that is so you're expected to, to provide some individual study. So this will be the, the contact hours, two hours per module per week, plus two hours teaching, two hours practical, so four hours in total, four modules in one semester. So it's uh, it, it, there is a lot of free space in the week, especially we tend to leave some free space in the middle of the week for your own activity, like if you want to do sports or personal activity. So that's completely uh, understandable and encouraged, I would say. Uh, but also uh, coming from a school environment, you may see, you may, it may looks like it's a very, very sparse 
time uh, timetable. It looks like that, but that means that you will need to fill it with your own uh, individual study. Clearly, you know, not completely independent because it's uh, you can always rely on us for for guidance. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh, yeah, I possibly will stop here. I can see other questions, but those are more admin related. Uh, so I guess I will leave other questions that are more admin related for uh, maybe Dinesh if you want to take that. Uh, but again, if you want to, I am happy to to be a contact point for you. So just write to me for any questions that you may have, and if I don't know the answer, I'll uh, I'll pass it over to to other people. Right now, I think we're really almost out of time, so please let me just thank you again for for your attention right now, and again. See you soon, hopefully. Thank you, Dan.